It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to this special edition of the Science Bowl. The two teams you're about to meet are vying for the chance to become the first of two finalists in this year's elementary school competition. We started with 32 elementary schools. We are almost down to the final two. So here we go. We have uh, the first team hails from Greenbelt Elementary School. They'll be competing against Whitehall Elementary. And in our game, uh, we are conducting this on Zoom, obviously, and very different from our normal pra practice because of the pandemic. The students are safely at home, and I am here in the studio. The team started out with 50 points, no penalties ever for incorrect answers. Each team will receive 18 points, nine in the first half, nine in the second, Different questions, but of similar difficulty. And uh, all of our questions come from the same six categories we've been using for the 35 years Science Bowl has been on the air. And these are those categories. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. It is now time to meet the team from Greenbelt. Would you please say hello to Magali? Hey, Magali, wave to everybody out there watching, all your fans. Next, say hello to Owen. Hey, Owen, good to have you back on the show. Great player and great player number three is Kenneth. Hey, Ken, we like that uh, Greenbelt Elementary backdrop there and the, the Greyhounds. The Greyhound is the mascot at Greenbelt. All right, Greenbelt, good luck. Let's begin. Green things for five points. You get a question in the five, the 15, and 25 point designations here. Here we go. No matter if the baseball players at spring training in Florida are from the American League or the National League, they're all said to be playing in this league, named for what big citrus fruit that has a tendency when you eat it to squirt you in the lemon, eye. Lemon? 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 lemon. lemon. Actually, the correct answer is a grapefruit. Grapefruits. It's called the Grapefruit League. And every time you try to eat a grapefruit, a lot of times it comes up and it pokes you in the eye, it squirts you in the eye. It doesn't mean to, but it just does. 15 points in green things. While carbon dioxide is a key ingredient for plants to perform photosynthesis, so too is dihydrogen oxide, better known as this. What, what do you like? Is, is it, it a a Could it be oxygen? Dihydrogen oxide. Hydrogen dioxide. <laughs> Dihydrogen oxide. Um, what, what do you guys? Owen, what are you thinking? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, 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 I think you were, you, Magali, you were, you were thinking in the right direction there, Magali. Uh, dihydrogen means two hydrogens. Oxide is O. H2O. Water. We're just talking about water. All right. For 25 points, here is a visual question in the green things category. There was a famous botanist by the name of Luther Burbank who developed a spineless cactus for cattle to eat, and he also developed a russet variety of this 
tuberous vegetable that helped save the people of Ireland from the Great Famine in 1845. And you can see those people starving because they didn't have enough of what vegetables to eat in Ireland. What tuberous vegetable for 25 points? Okay, okay. Don't to understand tuberous. Just, just I guess I I think I. I think I. I, think I, I, think I, I think there was another uh, clue in there too. The russet variety. A lot of the uh, potatoes we eat are russet potatoes. The po Great Potato Famine in Ireland. That was the answer there. Potato. All right. Let's do better in the zoo. For five points. When Olaf. While Olaf was having lots of fun in Frozen, the movie, the character who really saved the day was this ungulate who kept eyeing Olaf's nose and answered to Sven. Is that a reindeer? Yeah, it was Sven the reindeer. Yes, yeah, Sven wanted to eat the carrot that was Olaf's nose. Reindeer was right. You got yourself five points. Fifteen points. You've heard of March Madness. When the basketball or the base, yeah, the basketball teams from the colleges compete. Well, there was also March Mammal Madness on TV with mammals fighting mammals. But on the animal planet, they have something called Animal Fight Night. Features things like monitor lizards and scorpions, neither of which is a mammal, a lizard, and a scorpion. Rather, belong to what other groups? Of animals. Reptiles and arachnids. Oh, say it. Arachnids. Arachnids we will take or arthropods. Good, you got 15 points. Great. For 25 points in the zoo. The tiny mites that have been wiping out honeybees have been blamed for a condition known as CCD, the collapse disorder of what term? that defines a group of Colony. bees that begins with the letter C. Colony. Yes, ma'am, you got it. Colony collapse disorder. Thank you, Magali. Good answer. Good answer. Let's go to the body systems. Among the vestigial parts of your body, that means parts of your body that used to work better, but no longer do, are the muscles that let you wiggle these sense organs. No. Nose. The ear? Wait. Wait. Can you please ask a question? Sure. Among the parts of your body that used to work better but no longer do, they still work but not very well, are the muscles that let you wiggle these sense organs. And? What you got, Ken? The sense organ that you remember your ears. Uh, your ears is right, exactly right. You wiggle your ears. Some people can do it more than others. Okay, I saw you trying to do that. And again, make sure you don't just blurt something out. Check out with the other teammates there. Let's go to 15 points in the body. Aha. The muscles in your upper back, because they are triangular in shape, are named after the fourth letter in the Greek alphabet. It's alpha, beta, gamma, and then this fourth alphabet letter in the Greek alphabet means triangular in shape. I don't know if you can make it. I've heard of a shredder called a glitch or something. Yeah. The, the, the muscles in your back are the deltoids, and the letter is delta. Delta. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Here's the 25-point question in body systems. If you're suffering from rhinitis, you go to a doctor by the name who is specializes in ENT. ENT stands for what three body parts that are all connected up there in your head? <clears throat> e, N, and T. Yeah. Um, Problems, rhinitis. Whoa. What are those three body parts? You find them in your head. Just think, it's a very simple thing. Think about the body parts when you get all stuffed up. Well, I know. Nose is one. 
That's the end. Um, what is what are the E ear? and the T? Ear, ear, ear? is is the E and, and what's the T? Tongue. 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 Is it a tongue? Oh, uh, not teeth or tongue. Throat. Ear, nose, and throat. They're all connected there. All right, you got a hundred points to start out. All right, you got another shot at nine more questions in a few moments. So uh, uh, come back. Ready to roar. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. It is now time to meet the team from Whitehall Elementary School. Have won three times this year. Also hoping, as Greenbelt is, to move on to become the first of our finalists in this year's elementary school competition. Let's meet that Whitehall team. Hey, Brad, wave to everybody at home if you would. Nice to have you back. Great player. And joining him in greatness is Jake. Hey, Jake. Nice to see you too. And Layla. Another great player. Hey, Layla, good to have you back. Remember to lean in and talk into your microphone so we can hear you nice and clear when we ask the questions. Are you guys ready to play again? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. Thumbs up. Cool. Here we go. Green things for five points. Again, you get a five, a 15, and a 25-point question in each of our first three categories for five points. Because it contains an enzyme called bromelain, one of the best meat tenderizers is the juice from this fruit that looks like a giant spiky grenade. What we're talking about here is a pineapple. A pineapple. Big, spiky, like grenades that they throw in war. Let's try the 15-point question. Branches from these trees have traditionally been seen as signs of peace. I think it's an olive tree. Olive? olive. Say it again. Jake, Jake said olive. Olive is correct, Jake. Absolutely right. You see the dove and the olive branches, symbols of peace. Nicely done. Here's the 25-point question, and it's a visual question, Whitehall. This ecosystem that's a transition zone between land and water is sometimes called a wetland, but it is also called this name by politicians who say they want to drain the what on which Washington, D.C. was built and thus had a lot of mosquitoes. Yeah, a swamp. It is the swamp. They want to drain the swamp. That's right. They all say that. They all say that. Here's the zoo. You're doing fine. Five points. Even though this big word, computerized tomography, even though computerized tomography has nothing to do with felines, it is still a medical procedure named for what animal? A cat. A cat. That's right. Computerized tomography is usually shortened to C-A-T. Nice job. 15 points. When hummingbirds drop off, drop off into a deep sleep at night and their body temperature and their energy levels drop low, very low, they've got on to, gone into something called torpor, T-O-R-P-O-R, which is a bird's version of what habit that the mammals have. Hibernation. Hibernation is right, indeed. Torpor is equivalent to hibernation. Guys, you're doing terrific. 25 points in zoo. Some animals are diurnal, meaning they're active during the day. Some animals are nocturnal, being active at night. Others are crepuscular because they're most active at twilight, which occurs at what two D initial times of the day? D as in David. You see twilight at what two D initial times of the day? Dawn and dusk. Dawn and dusk. You got that right, Jake. Perfect. Let's go to the body systems. Five points. If you start to perspire, not because you're hot, but because you're scared, you're fear, you're afraid of failure, this kind of perspiration is called a flop what? What do you think? Um, 
Um, Perspiration that is caused by fear or failure is known as flop what? Lilla. Flop sweat. Flop sweat. So sometimes, you know, you're saying that you break out into a cold sweat. It's called a flop sweat. Try the 15-point question in the body systems category. Multiple choice. If someone has suffered a subdural, S-U-B-D-U-R-A-L, a subdural, subdural hematoma, have they had a stroke, a heart attack, or a burst appendix? What do you, what do you think? So, so a bunch of heart attack. Layla, what do you think? Well, well I think it's the third I think the first one. A subdural hematoma. So you're saying which, the first or the third? I didn't hear you. First. First one. Okay. What do you think, Jake? I agree with Layla. Okay. And how about you, uh, our captain up there? Uh, can, you, can you read the Brad. question? What's that? Can you, can you read the question again? Sure. If someone has suffered a subdural hematoma, sub, S-U-B, dural, D-U-R-A-L, hematoma, have they had a stroke, a heart attack, or a burst appendix? I guess I didn't know that. Say it again. I can't hear you. I agree. And what did she say? Hold up a number, one, two, or three, because I'm not understanding any of you. Number one, I see stroke. Number one, stroke. Stroke is correct, yes. 25 points in body system. Since melatonin, which helps you fall asleep and stay asleep, is produced in the pineal gland, an endocrine gland in your brain, Melatonin is this kind of body chemical. Um, a hormone? Hormone. You got that, Jake. Yeah, the correct answer there was indeed hormone. And we are giving you credit because one of our judges did hear you say flop sweat. So we're going to add five points. So you end up the first round with 180 points. You're going really well, guys. Keep it up. We'll see you again in a few moments. It's now time to meet the team from Greenbelt Elementary School, and they've got green all over themselves there. And they're a great team. Let's find out about our players. Let's talk to the captain here. Magali, tell us a, a little bit about what do you like about Greenbelt Elementary? Well, well the learning environment is very good. The, the teachers and the students. And the they're very passionate about the and, and, and it's also Oh, those are all good things. I love your word passionate. You know, because if you're not passionate about something, it really, things, it's just not the same. If you're passionate about something, you know, you just can't wait to do it. I heard someone recently say that, you know you've picked the best major in college if you can't wait to do your homework. Because, you know, you just want to do something so bad. You're doing a great job here as captain, as always. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go down to Owen. Hey, Owen. Mm -hmm. Owen, what is it that you like about your school, Greenbelt? Um, um, there are teachers, teachers, principals, principals, and workers. Mm -hmm. all, all those people are important. If you've got a good principal and good vice principal and good teachers, which you do. It's just a fun place to come. And obviously, they're doing a great job. And I know how proud they are of you for being here representing the school. And how about Kenneth? Hey, Kenneth, come on back up so we can see you. Hey, Ken Kenneth, can you wiggle your ears for me? No. <laughs> I know you were trying to do that. You were trying to do it before. You know, we used to be able to do that, but not so much. Be nice if we could kind of go. So we have to go like this to really hear people sometimes. What do you like about your school? I like that they actually make me really think. Really me really think. Yeah, they really want you to learn. They care about you learning, and they make sure that they can't. They don't go on unless everybody is right there. And you know, if uh, if it's fun. If you have fun at school and you seem like a fun guy, um, then you're in the right place. Ken, it's always nice to have you here. All right. It's time for Let's Get Physical, Potpourri, and Dateline here. Greenbelt, if you're ready, let's go. 
Let's get physical for five points. If there is some good to be found in a bad situation, it's often referred to as a lining made of this chemical element with the symbol silver. capital A G. Silver. silver. There's a silver lining to that. I like it. I like that you jumped on it for 15 points because honey, ketchup, and maple syrup don't give in to gravity easily. We say they have a very low level of this V initial property. Um, say it again. Velocity. Oh, it's so close. It's viscosity. Viscosity. It's, they're not very viscous. Good try. Here's a visual question for you for 25 points. Two-part answer. Cement, which is often made with a powder like lime, is a binder that holds together two materials, initialed S and G, that are used the world over to make concrete. A lot of the pits where they make concrete are known as S and G pits. What do S and G stand for that you can see in that picture? S and G to make concrete, to make cement. Um, do you guys think it has to do with salt? Do you guys think that it has to do with salt? Or do you think Sand? 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 Sand is one. Give it's me the so Come on, guys. She's doing it all on her own. Give me a Sand grain? Sand grain? Sand grain? Sand grain? Sand you're trying so hard. It's, you got the sand. Sand and gravel. Gravel is the G. That's what they use for making cement. Let's go to potpourri. Well, named differently depending in what ocean they occur. If in the Atlantic, they're called a hurricane. If it's in the Pacific or the Indian, they call them typhoons. Both have a minimum speed of 74 miles per hour, and both are types of tropical what sea initial kinds of storms. Cyclones. Cyclones is right. You got it. 15 points in potpourri. The 23 in the name of the genealogy company that advertises on TV, 23andMe, references these important body structures that are required for heredity and genetics. May you please The 23 in the name of the company 23andMe refers to these important body structures that are important for your inheritance. Your genetics. Is it chromosomes? Say it again. Is it chromosomes? It is chromosomes. You got that right. 23 chromosomes. Perfect. For 25 points in potpourri. Now you're going well. You're cooking with gas for 25 points. Drinking protein shakes full of a spice called turmeric that's used in curries is able to make amyloid plaques in your brain glow yellow. That helps doctors to detect evidence of this personality-robbing disease for which there is no cure. Alzheimer's disease. Say it again. Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is right for 25 points. Perfect. Let's go to Dateline for five points. Boy, what a boo-boo. In November of 1999, a Mars R orbiter was lost when NASA forgot to use metric measurements instead of English measurements. As a result, the spacecraft got too low in its orbit and burned up when it encountered this force as it went through the Martian atmosphere. What force in the atmosphere caused that orbiter to burn up as it was trying to come in to land on Mars? Do you guys I think it's drag. 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 I think it's drag. Wait. Don't that over. Remember, it's something that destroyed the spacecraft. It was. It's a force. Gravity. Gravity could have crumbled the spacecraft. Gra gravity is certainly pulling it down, but the force is friction. Friction. 
it burns up because as it encounters the molecules in the atmosphere, it causes... That's why when the spacecraft returns to Earth, they have those tiles on the underside to keep the spacecraft from burning up, those heat tiles. All right, let's do the 15-point question, multiple choice in Dateline. Was a penumbra, P-E-N-U-M-B-R-A, was one of those visible during the total solar eclipse back in 2017? During the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980? Or during the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn just last summer? Was it the eclipse, the eruption, or the conjunction when you would see a penumbra? So the choices again are the eclipse, the eruption of a volcano, or the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, where they were very close together. During which of those would you see a penumbra? Do you think it's the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn? Because they're so close to each other in the sky. Come on, you got, you got a... a uh, yeah, I need three and a third chance by guessing here. Uh, Magali, what's your first, what's your gut instinct here? What do you want to say for 15 points? The eclipse, the eruption, or the conjunction, the closeness of Jupiter and Saturn? The eclipse. The eclipse is correct, yes, because they're umbras and those are different kinds of shadows. Good answer. Here is the 25-point question to finish off the game. All right. You all saw it on television. That huge cargo ship in the Suez Canal, it got stuck. It wouldn't move for a week. Finally, after a week, by tugboats pushing and pulling and dredges taking tons of sand out from either end, it finally moved, but it was really helped by when this heavenly body did something. Tell me what heavenly body did something that helped to really move that ship out of its stuck position. Yeah. I don't know. 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 Wait, can you answer the question? To dislodge that huge ship that was stuck in the Suez Canal. The ship was uh, turned and it was just wide enough that no other ship could pass uh, passed it on either side. So to get it unstuck, because it was stuck in the banks, they uh, brought in tugboats to try to pull it and push it. They had big, heavy machinery digging sand from both sides to try to get it loose. Those things helped. But Mother Nature provided the most help, because what heavenly body did something to get that boat lifted up and moved out? <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, from you It was the moon. The moon was the heavenly body. And what does moon? What does the moon cause on Earth when the water goes up Wait. and down? Wait. Tides. Wait. Tides. 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 It created a high tide, and that tide is what finally lifted that boat. And everybody was cheering and blowing the horns on the boats and say, hey, we're finally, we're finally out of here after a week. All right, so you end the game, Greenbelt, with 165 points. Nice job. Some tough questions. You are some tough guys, though. We'll be back with you in just a couple moments at the end of the game. It is now time to talk to the team from Whitehall. And let's find out about our players, our wonderful elite players here. Let's start with the captain, and that is Brad. Brad, let me ask you uh, what it is about Whitehall Elementary that you like. Um, I like because I and we have a principal. All of our best. Wow! So you've got not only academic subjects, you've got a lot of extracurricular things to do. Certainly, when you're in school, this has been a tough year for everybody. But the key thing you mentioned there was teachers. And if you don't have great teachers, you don't have a school. It's just a building. You've got, it's the people inside, and it's people like you that make the teachers so grateful to come in every day because they know how much they're appreciated. Thank you.
Played a great game here, Brad. Keep it up. We'll see you in the second half. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to Jake. Hey, Jake. Hi. Jake, you are extraordinarily uh, well-versed in science. Uh, how do you know so much science? Well, well for, one for one thing, thing I like, I am very interested in finding out how things work. And so I ask a lot of questions, and my questions usually get answered. I watch a lot of science videos, and my dad gives me some science. Wow, so you've got a lot of things working for you. And the most important thing you said there, among many important things, is you ask questions. Because you don't find things out unless you ask questions and, you know, take things apart, you know, metaphorically and find out why things work the way they do. You're doing such a great job here today. Keep it up, Jake. Pleasure well, having you on Science Bowl. Well, You're well sometimes I literally take things apart. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's talk to the other teammate there. Let's talk to Layla. Layla, what do you like about Whitehall Elementary? Must be a great place. Um, <laughs> To teach and they so much clubs. Ah, different kinds of clubs, that's right. Yeah, because then you can get to know the teachers in a different way outside of the classroom. And, uh, you know, when I was a teacher, uh, sometimes kids would see you in the store and it was like, oh, he shops, he eats. You know, you want to find out that your teachers are real people. And certainly if you see them outside the classroom, um, that is important. You're playing a super game here, Layla. We love having you on the show. Whitehall, it is time for your last nine questions. And if you're ready, let's go to Let's Get Physical for five points. When the thermometer reaches minus 459 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 273 degrees Celsius, you are as low as you can go. You have reached what point? Do you think it's four? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's four? Say it again. Not freezing point, no. Hmm. It's known as absolute zero. Absolute zero. Let's go to 15 points and let's get physical. BMI stands for body mass index. And it's calculated by dividing your weight in what metric units by your height in what metric units? Any idea? Well, I think the height part is meters. We want the weight, the unit, the metrical unit for weight for your body, and then the height in the uh, metrical unit. Uh, I heard Jake say meters, so give me the weight. Um, pound? Kilograms. Kilograms, kilograms and meters is what we were looking for there. Good try, we can't give you any points. Let's get these 25 points with this visual question. Beautiful geodes, like this one, are never found in metamorphic rocks, but they are found in what other two categories of rocks? Igneous. Absolutely right. Igneous and sedimentary. You got them both. Perfect. Let's go to potpourri. Fossils of the long extinct dire wolves, D-I-R-E, which appeared in the television show The Game of Thrones, have been found in the pits of this gooey substance in La Brea, California. Tar? Tar. Yeah, the tar pits of La Brea. In the Flintstones cartoon, they were always going to the tar pits. La Brea is a real place. For 15 points, multiple choice, potpourri. When people say, girls aren't good at science and math, or boys are better at sports, are they genotyping them, phenotyping them, or stereotyping them? I think stereotyping. Say it again, Jake. When people say things that generalize, girls are no good at science and math, or boys are always good at sports, is that an example of something called phenotyping, genotyping, or stereotyping? Have you, have you 
Say it again. Stereotyping is correct. Yes, indeed. 25 points in potpourri. While cola drinks, like Coke, do contain phosphoric and citric acids, they are far less harmful than the acids in other drinks because they are dilute, the opposite of what C initialed condition. You've probably seen it on the side of a can of orange juice. It's concentrated and then you dilute it when you mix it with water. So concentrated was the correct answer there. Let's go to Dateline for five points. While dust from this African desert is the origin of many Atlantic hurricanes, it's also full of nutrients for the plants of the Amazon jungle. Name the African desert. African desert. No. Sahara. That's the Sahara, the big African desert, and the wind blows the dust across the Atlantic, and that is what causes all the water droplets to form, and eventually they become the hurricanes that form off Florida and the Bahamas and down in the Caribbean. All right, dateline for 15. In July 1996, headlines around the world proclaimed, Hello, Dolly! When what animal in Scotland made history because it was the first mammal cloned. Sheep. Sheep, that's right, Dolly the sheep. Last question of the game. One of the few scientists in the U.S. Capitol Statuary Hall in which each state has two representatives is Robert Fulton of Pennsylvania, who used this vapor to power boats and thus provide faster travel for passengers and goods on rivers in colonial America. What vapor helped to power those ships? Steam. Say it again. Steam. Steam is right. Water, vapor, or steam for 25 points. Excellent work. So you end that round with 270 points because one of the judges did hear that you said Sahara as the African desert. So you get credit for that. Well, we knew it was going to be a tough match because both these schools had distinguished themselves so much in the previous appearances that both been here three times before. Only one of them, though, is moving on to become the first of our two finalists in this year's competition. One of two out of 32 schools that started with us way back in September. Our final tally today is Greenbelt 165 and Whitehall 270. Whitehall, congratulations. Let's see some smiles out there. You've been kind of grim looking the whole time. Congratulations to all of our players, Brad and Jake and Layla and their coaches, Ms. Chilcott, Mr. Booker, and their wonderful principal, Ms. Farmer, who was a former coach when she was at the school. And we will see you guys on May the 5th. And we'll tell you uh, after April 21st who your opponent will be. And also our thanks to Miss Hollinsworth, who is does a bang up job all the time coaching that team from Greenbelt. Miss Sherelle Staggs is the vice principal over there. Miss Gaines is the wonderful principal. And yeah, Greenbelt is great. That's the slogan, and they live it and prove it every day. And we thank Magali and Owen and Kenneth uh, for being here today and doing such a great job. No one should feel that they lose this on the science bowl. You all win for being here because you're ambassadors for your school and people at home are watching. They can't answer these questions and are wonderful and they are amazed that you guys can come up with these. And I congratulate you all and I just hope next year I'll be able to welcome you all back here to the Bonnie John studio so we can play this game where you can actually sit next to somebody and, and see a real person and not have an image on the screen here. Guys, thanks again for everything. Next time, we're going to bring you the second of the semifinal elimination matches, and then right after that, the finale for the championship of this year's Science Bowl. We hope to see you then. Till then, I'm Dave Zerry. Bye-bye.